If you'd like to download my free ebook that will teach you how to have an awesome, enviable, and paying career in the game industry, just sign up for my newsletter in the description below or in the card up above. Thanks. Welcome, welcome everybody. In this video, I wanna talk a little bit about microphones and the various types and a little bit about what to use when. So generally there are two types of microphones. There's dynamic and there's condenser microphones. And there are other types, but this is the general gist of it. Now, dynamic microphones are what came around first. They're not terribly sensitive, they don't record high-end frequencies terribly well, but they're very, very rugged. And you'll know dynamic microphones by some famous ones like the Shure SM57. Now, the Shure SM57 is what I use for all of my video recordings where I do screen capture on my Mac, and that's where how I do all my voiceover for all that sort of stuff. Now, the reason you'd use a dynamic microphone is, like I mentioned, they're not too sensitive. You need to get up pretty close to them to get a good volume signal, which can be very good in some circumstances. For example, you might be recording something really, really loud, like a snare drum, which is what the Shure SM57 or other dynamic microphones are used for pretty frequently, or the initial impact of a gunshot, or hitting a light bulb to break it, or something like that, something with a big impact, so you don't want the microphone that you're using or the preamp to clip. So a dynamic microphone is very useful for situations where your sound source is pretty loud or you are getting up pretty close to it. And dynamic microphones, because they don't really have any moving parts, are pretty rugged as well. So I use my Shure SM57 when I'm up close near water or fire or things that may damage it. That thing's pretty rugged. I'm not really worried about it. And honestly, a lot of dynamic microphones can be pretty cheap as well. So if it does break, it's not that big of a deal. Now on the other end of the spectrum, we have condenser microphones. So condenser microphones are in two types. We have small diaphragm condenser and large diaphragm condenser microphones. Now condenser microphones are powered, meaning they need a small bit of voltage, 48 volts to be more specific, to work. So if you have a condenser microphone and you're plugged into your field recorder and it's not working, you're gonna need to turn on something called phantom power. And phantom power is what powers these microphones. So because they're powered, that's why they're more sensitive. So you can record more high frequency material, you can record things that need more sensitivity, like a really quiet source. They're very useful and generally very, very versatile. So which do you use and in what circumstance, either small or large? Well, small diaphragm condensers are extremely versatile. There's a myth that says that small diaphragm condensers can't really pick up bass, and that's not true. They can pick up every frequency pretty evenly depending on the microphone. They're very good at a broad range of frequencies. So when in doubt, use a small diaphragm condenser. That's what I always say. So large diaphragm condensers, the diaphragm moves a lot slower, so it responds a lot slower to the sound source, meaning that the sound that you get in the end is generally a lot warmer. So a lot of people use it for voice, for voiceover or drum overheads, anything that you need things to sound warmed up. Now there's no right or wrong in any of these circumstances. You can totally use a small diaphragm condenser on a snare drum or on a voice actor. In fact, I've done that many times. Or the shotgun mic that I'm recording this with is a small diaphragm condenser and it's picking up my voice just fine. So when in doubt, just use a small diaphragm condenser and if that's all you have, that's totally fine. It's a good versatile mic. So in general, what I say is that when you are recording any sort of source material, any sort of field recording, I like to have all of those mics at my disposal whenever possible. So when you have multiple mics, you have dynamic, you have small diaphragm, you have large diaphragm condensers, your bases are covered. And it's true that you do have to experiment. There's no hard and fast rules saying you must use this mic at this time, but some mics will work better than others. So to recap, a dynamic microphone will be useful for things that you're recording really, really closely and that aren't quiet. So they need to be pretty loud for a dynamic microphone to pick up a good amount of. 
So when I'm using my SM57 to record my voice for any of the tutorials like Absinthe or Massive or anything like that, I'm up really, really close on that mic. And it's great because it doesn't get the room reverb. It only gets my voice. It doesn't get any of the noise in the room, which is fantastic. But when I'm recording something like water or footsteps or something like that, I use a small diaphragm condenser in general. They're easy to carry around. Most shotgun mics are small diaphragm condensers, and they're easy to point at things. They're very easy to carry. Now, large diaphragm condensers I typically use on voiceover. So when I'm recording an actor for games, I'll use a large diaphragm condenser. It warms up the voice. Sometimes I'll use a small diaphragm if their voice is very high pitched, they're doing some sort of cartoony thing, or I just want a certain effect, or maybe I'm just experimenting and I want to see what things will sound like. Now, if you're using a field recorder like the Zoom H4n or Tascam DR05 or any of those that are out there, they all have small diaphragm condenser microphones on top, mainly because one, they're small, they're easy to carry around, and two, they're very versatile. You can use them in most any situation. So if that's all you have for now, or if all you have is a MacBook Pro with the built-in microphone, that's fine. Just use what you have for now because the key is experimentation and getting used to certain sounds. Picking up different sounds with whatever microphones you have will give you a lot of experience in knowing how to place a microphone, where to place your field recorder, and how to get the best sounds possible. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.